In this video, we're going to focus on how to simplify radicals with variables and exponents. So let's say if you want to simplify the square root of x to the fifth. The index number is a 2. Now one way you can do this is you can write x five times. And because there's a 2, you need to take out 2 at a time. So this will come out as 1x, and this will come out as another x. And you're going to get x times x, square root of 1x, just x by itself. So this is equal to x squared root x. Now another way you can simplify this or get that same answer is if you do it this way. How many times does 2 go into 5? 2 goes into 5 2 times because 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, that's too much. And what's remaining? 5 minus 4 is 1, so you get 1 remaining. And that's another way you can simplify it. So let's say, for example, if you want to simplify the square root of x to the 7. How many times does 2 go into 7? 2 goes into 7 3 times with 1 remaining. Now let's try this one. How many times does 2 go into 8? 2 goes into 8, or 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 goes into 8 4 times, with no remainder. 2 goes into 9 4 times, and 2 goes into 12 6 times with no remainder. For the 9, there's a remainder of 1, so the y is still on the inside. That's a quicker way that you can use to simplify uh, radicals. Now, let's say if you have a number. Let's say if you want to simplify the square root of let's say um, 32. What you want to do is break this down into um, two numbers, one of which was, is a perfect square. So 32 can be broken down into 16 and 2. Now the reason why I chose 16 and 2 is because we know what the square root of 16 is, and that's 4. And so this is just 4 root 2. Now let's say if we have a problem that looks like this. Let's say if we want to simplify the square root of 50 x cubed y to the 18th. So how many times does 2 go into 3? 2 goes into 3 one time with uh, 1 remaining. And 2 goes into 18 9 times. Now usually when you have an even index and an odd exponent you gotta put it in absolute value. Now your teacher may not go over this, but some teachers do, but just in case, if you have one of those teachers who wants you to use an absolute value, you only need it if you have an even index and if you get an odd exponent after it comes out of the radical. Now the only thing we have to simplify is root 50. Square root 50, we can break it down into square root 25 and 2, because 25 times 2 is 50. And the square root of 25 is 5, but the 2 stays inside the radical. So we can put a 5 on the outside, and let's put the 2 inside. So this is the final answer. That's how you can simplify uh, that expression. Let's try some other problems. So let's say if we have the cube root of x to the 5th, y to the ninth, and z to the 14th. So how many times does 3 go into 5? 3 goes into 5 one time with uh, 2 remaining. So we're, we're going to put an x squared inside. And the index number would, is going to stay 3. Now how many times does 3 go into 9? 9 divided by 3 is 3, with no remainder. And how many times does 3 go into 14? 3 goes into 14 4 times. And 3 times 4 is 12. So 14 minus 12 is 2. So we have 2 remaining. So that's how you can simplify radicals. Let's try one final problem. Feel free to pause the video and see if you, see if you can get the answer for this one. So the cube root of 16, x to the 14th, y to the 15th, z to the 20th. So how many times does 3 go into 14? 3 goes into 14 4 times. 3 times 4 is 12. And 14 minus 12 is 2, so we're going to get an x squared on the inside. 
3 goes into 15 5 times with no remainder because 15 divided by 3 is 5. 3 goes into 26 times. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 doesn't go into 20 evenly. And 20 minus 18 is 2, so there's 2 remaining. Now let's simplify the cube root of 16. Perfect cubes are 1. 1 cube is 1. 2 to the third power is 8. 3 to the third power is 27. So a perfect cube that goes into 16 is 8. So 16 divided by 8 is 2. So you want to write cube root of 16 as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2 because the cube root of 8 simplifies to 2. So this 2 is going to go on the outside, which we're going to put it here. And this 2 remains on the inside, which I'm going to put it there. So this is our final answer for that problem. So that's how you can simplify radicals with variables and exponents. But actually, let's try one more. Let's say if you have a question that looks like this. Let's say the square root of 75, x to the 7th, y to the 3rd, z to the 10th, over 8. Let's say x to the 3rd y to the ninth, z to the fourth. So the first thing we can do is um, let's simplify everything. Let's rewrite it. So 75 is uh, 25 times 3. We can square root 25. That's 5, but we'll do that later. And 8 is 4 times 2 because we can take the square root of 4. Now, when you divide exponents, I mean, when you divide variables, you got to subtract the exponents. 7 minus 3 is 4, and that goes on top because there's more x values on top. Now, for this one, you can do 3 minus 9, but I think it's easier if you subtract it backwards. 9 minus 3, which is 6, and because we subtract it backwards, the 6 goes on the bottom. And then 10 minus 4. So there's more z's on top than on the bottom, so we're going to put it on top. So z to the 6. And now let's simplify it. The square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 4 is 2. Now, 2 goes into 4 2 times. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so we get x squared. 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we get z to the 3rd. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we get y to the 3rd. And inside the radical, we still have a radical 3 and the square root 2 left over. So now, we also need to add some absolute values. Because we have an even index and we have a few odd exponents, we need to put z in absolute value and a y. So our last step is to multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. We need to rationalize the denominator. We need to get rid of that radical. So our, answer, our final answer is 5x squared absolute value of z to the third square root 6 over square root 2 times square root 2 is, is square root 4 which simplifies to 2 and 2 times 2 gives us 4 so we get 4 absolute value y cubed this is our final answer for that particular problem okay let's try just one more problem so let's say if we have um, the cube root of 16 x to the 7, y to the 4th, z to the ninth, divided by 54, x squared, y to the ninth, z to the 15th. So feel free to pause the video and try this example yourself. So the first thing I would do is within a radical, I would divide both numbers by 2 referring to the 16 and the 54. So right now, what I have is the cube root of 8, which is a perfect cube, over 27. 16 divided by 2 is 8, half of 54 is 27. So now what I'm going to do is subtract the exponents. 7 minus 2 is 5. And for the y's, I'm going to subtract it backwards. 9 minus 4 is 5. So y to the 5th. 
And for z, I'm going to subtract it backwards. 15 minus 9 is 6, but that's going to go on the bottom. And so now we could simplify it. So the cube root of 8 is 2. And 3 goes into 5 only one time with 2 remaining. And the cube root of 27 is 3. And 3 goes into 5 one time, just like x, with 2 remaining. 3 goes into 6 two times, so that becomes z squared. Now, we don't need any absolute values because this is an odd index. We only need it for even index numbers that produce an odd exponent. So now, let's simplify what we have. So, we need to get rid of the radical on the bottom. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the cube root of y to the first power. So what we now have is 2x cube root x squared times y divided by 3y times z squared times the cube root of y to the third. The cube root of y to the third cancels, and so that becomes y to the first. And y to the first times y to the first is y squared. So our final answer is 2x cube root x squared y over 3y squared z squared. And that's it. So now you know how to simplify radicals with variables and exponents. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and uh, have, a, have a wonderful day.